Hi, this is Li Chen Ren, Director of Modern Alpha Wisdom Tree ETFs. Welcome to China of Tomorrow podcast series, where we navigate China, India, Japan, and the broad emerging markets with members of Wisdom Tree and other industry leaders. It's May 28th, 2024. Hope everyone had a relaxed、uh, Memorial Day weekend.、Uh, I'll quickly comment on China's housing market. And when you know it's the likely bottom, and the military exercises across Taiwan Strait.、Um, first, um, I think I learned a new English quote today、uh, on the of the weekend. It's called、uh, "All for some, and some for all." I think it's meant to、uh, remember the people who sacrificed.、Um, and actually, it reminded me somewhat how this is actually relevant. When thinking about economic questions,、um, and on China,、um, and I'll illustrate、um, uh, how it's actually very, very difficult in the real world、uh, to have this kind of, you know, everybody sacrifice a little bit kind of situation.、Um, and using China's housing market as an illustration, I think people probably will also、uh, see it very familiar with the、uh, U.S. two eight two thousand eight. Nine housing market that after bubble burst, in terms of do you you know how do you bail out who do you bail out,、um, people are you know still pointing fingers and in China、uh, it's very difficult right now to kind of you know even though it's probably better for the government to bail out some of the developers but、uh, public opinion wise it's actually you know very unpopular and. That's probably one of the you know reasons that you know China has not really done too much housing support. So anyway, I'll go you into detail on, on that. Well,、uh, first quickly on the military exercises across Taiwan Strait.、Uh, I think uh, uh, I think it's sometimes、uh, market generally overreacts to things across Taiwan Strait.、Uh, in the near term, I really do not see. A、uh, significant risk、uh, for war, but I think、uh, e- both sides like to kind of make the Taiwan uh, uh, issue uh, because in Taiwan、uh, the the new president is a minority president, which means he got、uh, about forty two percent of the votes of the popular votes, and also he doesn't have the Legislature majority, so his party is is minority、uh, in the Congress as well, which、uh, makes the majority、uh, who's pushing through、uh, some laws, which are actually pretty common laws in the in in the U.S. Like、uh, Congress has a、uh, you know power to investigate.、Uh, Taiwan didn't have that much power given to the Congress, so the they've been talking about. This a lot. So domestically,、uh, Taiwan is going to have a lot of,、um, uh, I will say,、uh, tense moments、uh, for de- for its own domestic policies. And sometimes, you know, when your domestic has tense moments, actually, presidents or you know leaders like to stress this outside uh, uh, pressure to divert attention a little bit. So. And similar in China, mainland as well, because the economy is not doing very well. Unemployment rate is high, particularly for the young. Then you have this issue, which is really、uh, the, I will say, the ultimate red bottom line. If you,、uh, if anybody who knows a little bit Chinese history,、uh, knows that the Taiwan issue is, at, you know, no party can stay in power if, if.、Uh, They lost Taiwan, so、uh, it's not you know a value judgment. It's just a fact. And if you understand China's history, it, it's really、uh, you know the it's really easy to understand.、Uh, maybe in the future, in the longer episodes, we can you know talk a little bit more. So having、uh, you know Taiwan issues to talk about is actually a good attention diversion、um, where everybody is behind. Uh, I would say 100 percent, but you know, 90 percent,、um, way more than 90 percent, is behind the government on this issue. So, so I think、uh, um, I think market usually overreacts. I think in short term, 
I really don't see a uh, uh, high risk uh, in the next, you know, three to five years. But beyond uh, five years, actually, the risk is increased because um, the current uh, president is a very much for Taiwan independence, uh, even though you know he's bound by uh, the constitution, the Taiwan, you know, People's Republic of China's constitution. And uh, also U.S., um, you can see that the U.S. is not as kind of putting restraint on Taiwan as before for its own reason. Uh, so anyway, it's all very complex geopol geopolitical. But I, I, I think overall, uh, this risk is still very low. So I think people are finally going to realize that uh, the major issue is between China and the U.S. And then the main issue is really uh, technology competition. So all the other issues, uh, it's just a manifestation of this main issue. Um, okay, so if you have any questions about this and um, you can uh, you know, leave comments on my Twitter feed and, and I can try my best to, um, you know, I think some of the English uh, reporting on Taiwan, uh, before I really don't pay attention to any English reporting on Taiwan because uh, I usually just go directly to the Taiwanese local media, whether it's, you know, pro-independence or uh, against independence, there are several medias in Taiwan that if you just read most of the headlines and kind of taking average of the headlines that you, you get like the middle point. But I think in the English, uh, now that I pay a little bit more attention uh, on the English uh, reporting on, on Taiwan, I will say I'm really disappointed. I think uh, the quality of the reporting, uh, really some of it is uh, not very reflective of what's actually uh, going on in Taiwan. Uh, and also probably, you know, the analysis. But anyway, regardless uh, on this issue, I I don't think, uh, I think uh, it will require dial down a little bit. Ultimately, what's happening in Taiwan is going to be driven by its uh, domestic uh, economic issues um, and similar in, in the mainland as well. Now on the uh, China's housing market, and again, in the beginning, I mentioned that uh, you know, this new quote is called, you know, all for some and some for all. You know, some people really give everything. Well, actually, it's very, very difficult. I think that's probably we as a human race like these simplified quotes. Because in real life, um, not, not, you know, nobody wants to give some <laughs> because everybody feel like, Hey, you know, I'm giving some, but the others are giving, you know, zero or they've taken so unfair. So I think China's housing market is in that situation. Um, uh, the developers and, uh, uh, some of the people who have bought early has, and in bigger cities has, uh, gotten, you know, 10 or 20 times, uh, of, uh, uh price appreciation. And it's very, very difficult to, gather the, uh, you know, the people's opinion uh, to go and save China's housing market. That's why I think you see very, uh, some of the policies, even though headline looks really good, like they will be uh, buying some unsold houses on the market. Um, the reality is the amount of money that the government is willing to use is still uh, very small. Uh, I think the rumors uh, that was, you know, before the actual release was at least 10 times more the money. So you can see that why people are disappointed. And I generally, if you followed me, you know that generally on the housing, I've been uh, on the negative uh, and I've been skeptical of some of these policies because if you actually know how this is, works, uh, first it's a loan, it's not really just money to go buy out. And the loan rate is about 1.5%. For many local governments, 1.5% uh, loan rate uh, is actually they are more likely lose money. And Chinese typical governments do not like to deal with ordinary people because uh, as soon as you have you know these housing stock on the hand, you have to rent it out. You have a group of people who are probably poorer. It's more likely to go on the street. 
Uh, that's why China doesn't have these, you know, kind of as much on public housing uh, things in China. So I don't think, I think uh, after a couple of months, the government is going to realize that these kind of uh, buying up uh, uh, houses, it's not going to work that much. It's, it's really much better just give some money to, um, to typical, you know, people uh, for, for rent. But again, China, China, even though on the name it's a socialist country, it's not used to doing that kind of direct transfer. And it takes a long time for the leaders in the top to change their mind a little bit. But, but this year, compared to last year, it's definitely has some change. This year, I think finally, um, there is this kind of consensus that, uh, you know, you still have to, you know, give some money to, to ordinary people, uh, in some way to kind of stimulate the economy. It's not uh, the kind of the U.S. ones. So I think I remember, uh, in 2008 or nine or, Oh, I think if you go back to Great Depression days, generally the public is not very happy of bailing out uh, businesses or bailing out people who have a lot of debt. So in China is similar, um, and particularly in China is not uh, used to giving welfare to typical person. Most of China's uh, government spending is on investment. So even though it's good, it's like you know the government try to spend the money building better roads. So most people do benefit from those. But usually the Chinese government is not into like, oh, I'll give you some free health care or, or free uh, pocket money uh, to spend. So it's going to take a while. And I, I think sometimes people will ask me like, you've been so negative on China's housing market, when is it going to end? And I actually going to say that uh, I, I, some people are calling it a bottom. I, I don't think so. Um, First, if you look at the, you know, Beijing and Shanghai, they still have like house buying uh, restrictions on them. I think uh, until the time comes that Beijing and Shanghai start relaxing those, that's probably, you know, the bottom. Or the other way to think about it is that when people think the houses are just so cheap and nobody wants it anymore, uh, even when it's cheap, that's probably the bottom because the bottom is not like when it's fair value because usually the any market they usually go to the extreme so even when it's fair value like people are saying oh you know right now housing market is fair value now but it's not fair value is not the bottom it's because people are still on you know because the expectation has changed the, the housing market that always goes up it's not going up anymore that that's going to make people um kind of hold on to that cash in particular in china right now the inflation rate is also very low so i i think uh i think china equity is in a little bit of price momentum uh again we talked the last episode because the government did put in significant money to pop up in the when it was really really uh in a little bit fear factor um, and we do see a little bit more stimulus than last year. I think, uh, um, we have to acknowledge. So, so I think uh, having some China exposure, uh, should be, you know, should, should help, uh, portfolios overall to, on the other hand, China equity are bound to be going to be very risky, uh, because, uh, first domestically you have this housing uh, bubble burst, which, it's going to require quite some time to uh, get out of. And also U.S. Uh, is, you know, pretty relentless in terms of trying to contain China. I think uh, we should just be honest that that is the current U.S. strategy. You know, U.S. can say that it's not but from everything, you know, U.S. does right now. Uh, it's, 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 it's really a containment uh, strategy. So anyway, um, thank you for listening and, uh, uh, help us, uh, give, give us comments so that we can do these episodes uh, better. Like, you know, what kind of questions you have. Um, you can, uh, see the kind of tweets that uh, I sent it out and then comment on it. And, you know, you can, you can also ask us, you know, directly comment on tweets about the kinds of questions you have. And I'll try to, uh, bring my analysis, um, this summer. I'm not going back to China. I'll visit. There's still not many 
direct flights, uh, that's another indicator. I mean, how bad the U.S.-China relationship is. Um, anyway, uh, let us know what kind of you know things that you are interested in, and we're very happy uh, to talk to you. Thanks.